This has to be one of the most impressive things I've seen since ChatGPT came out. This update really is a game changer and can take things to a whole new level. So you're going to want to make sure you stick around because here's what we're going to do today. We're going to turn images into video, create heat maps based off of data sets, extract color palettes from images, and then show you the ultimate SEO mastermind. Turn files into GIFs and then turn GIFs into videos. Analyze SEO keywords and then to create some visually appealing graphs and charts to make things very easy to understand based off of any data set. It's going to take ChatGPT to the next level. Let me show you exactly how to locate and find Code Interpreter. And usually what you think you might do is go to plugins. It's not there. So what you want to do instead is just open up your settings tab. Once you're in the settings tab, you want to go to beta features, simply turn on the toggle for Code Interpreter. You now want to hover over GPT-4, this tab up here, and now you can see that you have the option for Code Interpreter. Just click it. Once you have it clicked, it's activated. This is the tool you'll be using within ChatGPT. Now watch this. The first thing we're going to do is turn images into videos, just like this. So notice down here, we have a little plus button. This is where you now have the ability to upload a file. So now in this case, we're going to upload a panoramic photo. And just like magic, we're going to turn this into a video that's going to pan in one direction and really take things to the next level as far as this scenic panoramic shot. Okay, so now that I selected a file, you can see down here in the left-hand side of the search bar, it's ready to go. So, so now what we're going to do is we're going to ask ChatGPT to animate this photo and make it look like a video that's panning in one direction. So what that's going to consist of is entering a prompt right here. There's also going to be a link in my description, so any prompt that you see or we use today, I'll have a link in my description that you can click, and then all these prompts I'm showing you today that we need, you can just copy and paste them and use them for yourself and you can just scroll down and you can see all these prompts now what I'll do is I'm gonna put these prompts underneath this headline featured YouTube video prompts that way it's easy for you to find and then underneath message go ahead and paste in a prompt so here's the prompt we're gonna be using today so you can see it starts to think it's clarifying it's gonna spit out a few more details for you okay so now check this out my video is done loading and look at this so after I put in the prompt right up here let me just show you the process of what code interpreter did and so it basically tells you it's gonna proceed as follows. It's basically thinking out loud as like this mad scientist and you're just watching it sitting back and letting it do its magic. I don't necessarily know what you're doing Code Interpreter, but I'm going to trust the process, watch you work, and just wait for my final product where I can click the video and then watch it. All you have to do now is just click this link. It's going to go directly into your downloads file and I'll show you exactly how this one looked. So here we go. Code Interpreter created an 8 second video. Let's hit play and watch this happen. Look at this go. So you can see it go back and forth. It's going relatively fast and and it's panning from left to right, right to left. It's pretty cool. Now, one thing to keep in mind, I'll press play again. You can just kind of watch this again. Now, you might think to myself, oh, it might be a little bit too choppy, or I don't want it to go left and right twice. It's going too fast, too slow, etc. So on my screen, I'll show you a few ways to actually modify this prompt and get it just the way you like it. For example, to make the image smaller, just tell GBT to resize it by 50% or any percent that you prefer. Number two, to pan the video from bottom to top, change the prompt to this, what you see on the screen right here. Start bottom, center, top, end. Change it to that, and then it will pan the video from bottom to top. You can also do it the other way around. Now, to make the video two times faster, change the frame step from eight to 16 pixels or to make it slower, do the opposite. Now, I wanna tell you, there might be a couple times where it might not get it just right for you, especially if your image is too large. You wanna make sure you're not putting in images that are too large. When I've tried that a few times, it simply just didn't work. So it has to be somewhat of a decent sized image. It can't be too big. So the next thing we'll do is create a heat map based off of a data set. I'm gonna provide it in Code Interpreter, and it's gonna provide me with a heat map of the busiest airports in the US. Okay, so now in order to do this, what you want to do is simply upload a CSV file. I have a data set file that's called usairports.csv, and it's just the top busiest airports in the United States. So once you have that uploaded, the next thing is just to say, please create a heat map of this data of the busiest airports in the United States, and then watch this. Wow, I'm blown away with what I'm seeing so far. So Code Interpreter noticed that my CSV file had a few minor issues with it. It noticed that I had some things missing, that the data didn't start until it got to the third row, 
And just like that, it noticed everything, made the adjustments on its own without me having to do anything. I sat back, I relaxed, and I let it do all the work for me until it created its own final draft for me. It basically told me, hey, your data doesn't look as good as I thought it would be. So let me take the initiative. Let me be assertive, and I'm going to recreate this and make it better. After I fed it the prompt, it said, all right, let's start by loading the data from the CSV file to examine its structure. Here are the columns of interest. Then it basically thinks out loud, labels everything, and basically says, you know what? Your table is not as good as I thought. Let me go ahead, take the initiative, and let's clean it up by doing this. Setting appropriate column names, then converting relevant columns to appropriate data types if needed. So then it says, here's the heat map showing the number of passengers boarded at the top U.S. airports for the years 12, 21, and 2022. The airports are sorted by their rank in 2022. Okay, so I hit open image in new tab, and let's expand this and look at everything it did for me. Check this out. So here's everything exactly how it said, 2012, 21, and 2022. So check out the next thing we're gonna do. This is pretty cool. We're gonna create a script to generate and gather all of the colors out of an image. Now this is gonna work specifically well for gradient images that have that good gradient color scheme and you might not be sure what colors are actually formulated together. So over here on my screen right here, and we wanna get the color scheme from this gradient image, specifically where you have the purple yielding into that hot pink type look. So here's what we have to do. So right above it, you could see my actual prompt. All you have to do is say, create a script that extracts the colors from an image and then make it into a palette.png to download. Wait for the image to upload, okay? I'll move this down and then here is what code interpreter says. Okay, once you upload an image, I'll create a script that will do just that. So basically, it does everything we want it to do. It caught one of its own mistakes, rectified it, and then here you go, download color palette. It creates you a link to automatically download the color palette. It's downloaded and let me open this up. Now check this out. Here is the actual color palette that it downloaded for us. So if I bring my image back over here, you could see the two. So you can see the actual image and then you could see the color palette that was created to make this whole entire image. So if I combined all of these colors together to make a gradient image, this is exactly what you're going to get. And then that will work exceptionally well on a tool like this. So you can see on my screen, I like to use a tool called Coolers. This is where you can create your own gradient and come up with all sorts of palettes. And so with the combination of these two things, you could really get a good color scheme and really craft and create some good looking gradient images. Okay, so now the next one is impressive, specifically for SEOs or people in marketing. This is gonna help you level up your Google rank and then help you outshine your competitors, specifically when it comes to keyword analysis. Check this out. Now I'm gonna go through this very quickly since I'm showing you a wide array of items today. I think that this tactic I'm showing you right now does deserve to have its own separate video in more details. And so for that, I'm actually gonna do a separate video detailing how to use Code Interpreter specifically for SEO purposes, but for today, I just had to show this to you guys. It's way too good to pass up. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do right here, just go to any tool, like in this case, I'm using SEMrush, or you can use the Ahrefs. You can even use Google Search Console or anything else. You just wanna find an assortment of keywords for one main specific keyword. So in this point, I'm over here in SEMrush, and you can see that I entered the keyword chat GPT prompts. And so from there, using the keyword magic tool, it's generating all of these other related keywords based off of chat GPT prompts. And so you can see right here, I have all keywords 62 with a total search volume of almost 30,000. And so here are all these right here. So now here's what we wanna do to take advantage of Code Interpreter. So now simply all I'm gonna do is just go ahead and export this whole entire list. You wanna export it as a CSV file. Now let's let Code Interpreter do the rest of the work for us. Watch this. The next thing we'll do is hit this plus button right here in the search bar. And then now I uploaded that CSV file directly from SEMrush. So you can see the file is right here. Watch what we do next. Here's the prompt we're gonna use. I'm gonna paste this prompt right here. And basically what I say is, please inspect these keywords, rank them in order of my best chance of improving my ranking and provide me with the highest leverage keywords. Remove any keywords with duplicate search intent. Hit enter and then watch this. This is gonna be a little bit of a step-by-step -step process, but the final product is gonna be very effective and very impressive. So right now it's just basically summarizing everything my data consists of. Now here is this part of the data it gave us. Here are the top five highest leverage keywords ranked by their leverage score. So it's giving us the keyword, the search volume for each one, search volume, keyword difficulty, and a good score. Now, what we're going to do next is this. I'm then going to say, please break down all the SEO keywords into a structured table. I'm going to make this prompt even better. I went ahead and re-uploaded the file, and now I'm going to say this prompt right here. I need you to list these keywords based on these important metrics. High search volume, and I gave it the definition. Same thing for keyword difficulty, and then high traffic opportunities. 
Okay, so now check this out. Based off the data, it says here are the top five keywords for each of the important metrics you specified. So it gives us the top five for the highest search volume, and then for low difficulty, and then for high traffic opportunities. Now watch this. Now I'm going to say, please put all this information into an organized table with the following columns. Keyword, volume, difficulty, search traffic, and then chance to rank score. So here we go. Here's the top five by chance to rank score. And then we have the keywords on the left with the search traffic, the difficulty, and then the ranking. So it's giving us an awesome combination with the score at the very end. Okay, so now the next thing we're going to do is this. Head on over to Google Search Console, and then based off my own website's data, I'm going to come over here and then just download the top keyword search queries directly from Google Search Console. So here we are right here at the top 10. So now I'm just going to simply export this to CSV as well. So now we're going to come back over here to Code Interpreter and then upload this new file as well. Type in this prompt after you do this. Please give me some charts and graphs analyzing the data to make it easy to understand. Okay, so now check this out. Look at the actual genius of Code Interpreter. So the first thing it's going to say in this paragraph right here, it notices any error. It takes the initiative again. Let's update our data cleaning process to handle this. Well, thanks again for actually improving and making my work a little bit better. So then check this out right here. It made these three graphs for me and then it explained all three of them right here. So top 10 keywords by search volume, top 10 keywords by CPC, and then search volume over time for top five keywords. So then here we go. There's the first one it gave us. Top 10 keywords by search volume. And then let's go to this one right here as well. Search volume over time for top five keywords. Now check this out right here. So you could see that I just started my website not long ago, but it really started to take off after December 2022. So the other thing we can do is continuing with this data is even ask it to do another thing like this. Based off of my most recent request and prompt, I said, please analyze this data from Google Search Console. And then it says, I'm ready to help analyze your data. Please upload the file. And then all I did was just upload the same exact CSV file that I did before. And then here we go. It provided me with even more charts and graphs similar to the one I showed you before, but that's not it. Here's what we're going to do next. I'm going to take all four of these images and then convert these into an actual GIF file. All you have to do to do that is just say, please collate all images into a GIF file. And then you could see Code Interpreter again. It runs into a little bit of an error, but it doesn't give up. It just keeps trekking. And then finally it says, finish working. I've created a GIF file that includes all the visualizations. Download it by using this link right here. Hit download button, downloads, and then watch this. Boom, there's the GIF file. And so then just to make sure it works, I went ahead and just text messaged me this actual GIF file. And you could see I'm completely hands-free. I hit the play button within my text and you could see, there we go. There's the GIF file. It's repeating and then just playing completely on its own, just like a GIF file. And so there we go. It did the GIF file perfectly. So the next thing we're going to do is do what we just did, but in reverse. Now we're going to take a GIF file and actually turn that into a video file, just like this. So back over here in Code Interpreter, I have my file, my GIF file that I uploaded. And now all you have to do is just do this one incredibly simple prompt. Please turn this into a video. That's it. Upload your file and simply just say that. Please turn this into a video. And then just like that, it's going to do it. And then right here, it's just going to simply ask you to confirm this is what you mean. And then just type in yes. And then watch the magic happen. I've successfully done it. Again, click this link to download your video. And let's see how it did. There is my video and then there is my link. And now here we go. So if we open these files up side by side, you can see on the left hand side, here's the GIF file. It consists of 54 different frames for a GIF file. Okay, there's the GIF. And then on the right hand side, it converted all the frames from this GIF file and made it into a nice two second video file. I'll hit play and then there you go. It's officially a video file. It's pretty cool. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is something that's very simple, but yet very impressive. We're going to create a QR code directed to any website or URL we want in just one simple step. Check this out. Here is the QR code I created right here. This is exactly all I did. My first step was I just fed it one simple prompt. Create a QR code for this link. Here's the URL. Just copy and paste it in and then just say, and then show it to me. All you have to do is just type in that one simple sentence, that one simple prompt, say show it to me, and boom, just like that, it populates and shows it. Here we go. Here is the QR code for the URL you provided, just like this. You could scan it, and we're gonna do that right now. I haven't tried this yet, so we're gonna do it in real time together and see if it actually did it, and if it actually works exactly how it said it was. So I'm gonna open up my camera, and I'm gonna scan it right now in real time and see if this did it the right way. So I have my phone over it, I'm actually scanning the screen right now, and then let's see what happens. And then there you have it. It did it exactly how I wanted it to. So what I had to do was direct 
exactly to the link that's in my description. And then again, you can see it right here. You can actually scroll up and down. There's a QR code. I scanned it and it did it effectively. Okay, so then the last thing we wanna do is actually take advantage again of Code Interpreter's way of really analyzing data like a mad scientist. So now this time, I'm gonna feed it some statistics of the largest United States counties, the largest counties in the United States, and then ask it to generate some very eye-catching, appealing looking graphs, charts, and more data visualizations. And so what I uploaded right here was the largest counties in the United States. So then I'm gonna use a series of two prompts. Here is the first prompt. Give me 10 ideas of trends, visuals, and analysis that I could do with this data set. So Code Interpreter really is like a professional data analysis. It's gonna take all this information and do things that I might not think about myself. So if we come back over here to Code Interpreter, you can see it getting to work right away. Sure, based on the data set, here are 10 ideas. Population growth analysis, bar chart of population, pie chart, growth trend line, citywide analysis, scatter plot, heat map, predict future, compare population, and box plot. Wow, very impressive. So now, let's just go ahead and ask it to do a couple of these things. So I'm going to say, please provide some trendy modern visuals in the form of different types of graphs and charts based off of the uploaded data set. I'm giving it basically a vague instruction saying just provide some trendy modern visuals, but if you really wanted to zoom in on one of these specifically, I could have just said, okay, great, provide me with some visuals or charts specifically relating to population growth analysis, or I could actually ask it to create this number two one for me, bar chart of population. It will do that. And so then the great thing I like about this is that anytime it runs into a little bit of a stump, it kind of self-corrects and rectifies it automatically, it doesn't just give up. If you notice, have you ever had other apps or other tools that you use and it runs into a little bit of a wall that it just stumps it and then just gives up right away. And the awesome thing about Code Interpreter is that it doesn't give up. Look, look at this. So it did that. So it said two times, here's something we need to address as suspected. This column contains this error, but nonetheless, it just went ahead and kept going. So based off of what I asked it to do, you could see it did provide me with these things. So let's go ahead and click on this over here. I'll open it into a new tab. And then there we go. Population in 2023 by county. This did it the exact way we were looking for it to do. So thank you so much for watching this video. And please don't forget to hit that subscribe button because I'll have a lot more videos like this coming out and you'll be the first to know when they do come out. But until then, we'll see you next time. I'm